Okay, everyone, we're going to get started. We are live. Hey, good morning, good afternoon. You get a special guest to host today. Uh, as Leo warned you last week, uh, she was going to be away for the session. So you get me. Hopefully everything's coming through live and I'm on camera. If you can't hear, hopefully your speakers um, uh, can be unmuted and uh, no telephone dial in for the event. So you're probably wondering who this guy is on my screen. Well, my name's Randy Casson. I'm your special guest host today. Uh, I'm a senior product consultant with Intuit. Uh, I've been here for 17 years. And next week will be 18 years, which is kind of bonkers when you think about it. And I'm located in frigid Tucson, Arizona. So thanks for being here. Uh, hopefully your deadline uh, from yesterday was um, you made it through. You're still wanting to be an accountant. And hopefully it's been a profitable season for you so far. Okay, so a little bit about uh, navigating the Zoom webinar platform. So we're going to be using the question and answer box today. So please um, access that on the lower panel. We have enabled closed captions. So you'll just need to click on show caption uh, there at the bottom and you'll start to see the words um, floating onto the screen. And then here's a link to the handout. I'll go ahead and read it out to people as well. Uh, it's uh, www.intuit.me forward slash ITK handout dash mar 23. Um, now I've been a long time listener, first time host, and there have been times when I've run late to these uh, sessions. So, uh, you know, we just changed the naming convention slightly in the month. So you could save this link in your calendar for uh, the next session, which won't be in April. Right, we've got a deadline, so we're not going to be, be we won't be here in April, but we'll be back in May, and then you could always just change those little uh, three number letters, from March to May, and you should have the the deck right away. So just a, a little trick. Okay, agenda. Welcome everyone. Thanks for being here. Uh, we'll cover the CPE credit eligib eligibility information. Uh, we'll look at uh, reviewing the learning topics or sorry, objectives and, and learning about today's topics. And then we'll wrap up at the end, uh, accountant and resources, and then we'll close out the webinar. Um, so again, if you can't hear, we are live, uh, check check sound settings on your on your computer or headset. I'm, I'm rocking it old school. I'm gonna fly, uh, land this plane. I borrowed these from uh, Captain uh, Captain John over at, at Delta. Okay, so a little bit about Zoom. Uh, please use the question and answer section of the Zoom panel, um, not the chat button. If you can, only submit questions related to the content feature today. Um, not all questions will be addressed during this session, but we do have uh, FAQs we can provide. There's a bunch of you and a few of us, so we'll do our very best to get to it. If you have specific support questions and you're an accountant user, uh, you've got your accountant hotline phone number. It's the 888-333-3451. If you're a non-accountant joining us today to learn about the new features, I would recommend going up in the upper right of your QuickBooks Online program and start a chat or a, uh, a con su support contact that way. Either if you want to chat, a call back, you'll get a direct phone number, et cetera. Okay, so hopefully that sounds good. CPE process. So in order to receive CPE credit in each training session, you must be present for a minimum of 50 minutes to earn the one CPE credit, answer all polling questions. And if all or part of the requirements are met, your CPE will be emailed within two weeks following the close of the webinar to the email address you registered for the webinar. Uh, please note, um, Go ahead and add accountant underscore training at intuit.com to your approved contacts. Uh, so that's where the CPE certificates will come from. I know it could get jammed up in spam or junk. Um, so casually check that as well. Okay, uh, CPE learning objectives today for the March 2023 webinar. 
So first off, we're going to learn uh, all about apps in the QuickBooks Online Account and Client View, the QBOA Client View. And then next, we'll find out more about uh, QuickBooks Online Advanced Chart View and Multi-Company or Spreadsheet uh, Sync Features. We're going to have the dynamic duo come in there to present that. And then the last session, we'll be discovering the planning and budget features in QuickBooks Online. It's kind of exciting. Uh, I think there's some, some good things there. Again, the handouts listed below. Go ahead and pause there for a second so everyone can capture it. Okay. First, before we get to our special guest speakers, uh, let's cover some uh, March news and highlights. I think I've got one thing to cover. Um, so the QuickBooks Virtual Conference, Accelerate Growth with Mid-Sized Clients Using QuickBooks. It's uh, March 21 and 22, coming up next week. Um, so join us for a free virtual conference covering how to broaden the services you offer, grow your client base, and ultimately boost your revenue by adding mid-sized clients. Now go ahead and unlock the opportunity to expand your services through the QuickBooks online ecosystem. You can earn up to 14.5 CPE credits. Topics uh, covered included advisory services, uh, pricing strategies, QuickBooks and third-party apps, converting to QuickBooks Online, and QuickBooks Online Advanced. And registration link is uh, listed below. When you downloaded the deck, you can click on that and, and register. Probably also can find it at Account University as, as well. Okay. So without further ado, let me go ahead and bring on Ammer. And Amr is going to cover apps in QuickBooks Online Account View. Amr, take it away. Thank you, Randy. Let me share my screen here. Awesome. Um, so I'll be covering apps in QuickBooks Online Account View, right? But before I do, let me quickly go ahead and introduce myself. Um, my name is Amr. I am a product manager here at QuickBooks Advanced, and I also work on the apps team as well. Uh, I am based out of Mountain View. And before we go um, into some of the, the, the feature showcase itself, I'd love to do a quick poll. Um, so the question here is, do you use third-party integrations um, slash apps with QuickBooks Online? Um, feel free to select one if it's yes. Two, if it's no, or if you don't know, just, just three, the third option. And Paul should stay up for about a minute, so get to the questions as soon as you can. What do you think, Amber? I, I think we're good to go. Okay. 80 20 is my guess. Awesome. Yeah, as expected. That's, that's great to hear. Um, so good majority of everyone does use apps, right? So let me go forth into the next question here. So if you do use third-party apps uh, and integrations with QuickBooks Online, uh, how valuable are the third-party integrations uh, slash apps that you've connected with QuickBooks um, to run your business, right? Um, so zero, we'll, we'll go from top to bottom. So if you select one, it's not valuable at all. And then if you go on the other end, five, it's extremely valuable. Cool, we'll just wait a few seconds here, to get some of the answers in and then we can end the poll. So many good I ones think, out there. Yeah, <laughs> I, I think we're good here, right? Awesome, so a, a little bit of a, a mixed bag. Um, a lot of people said, yes, extremely valuable. And then there were a couple in the middle of, hey, let's work on it a little bit, right? So that's awesome. Great, great feedback. 
And last question for those of you who said that, hey, I do not use third party integrations, right? With QuickBooks, um, I would love to understand from your point of view as to why you do not, right? Um, so the first option here is that I wasn't aware I could connect apps to QuickBooks. The second is the app is difficult to use. The third is I cannot find an integration slash app between QuickBooks Online and the tools that I needed. The fourth is the app did not work as expected. The fifth is the app had security concerns. And then six um, other, right? You can specify in the Q&A section. Cool. We'll just also spend a couple more seconds here so you can read through and we'll stop after that. What's your guess on this hammer? Uh, I, I think we're good. I'm I'm reading through uh, some of the comments, and and with with that being said, we can just go straight into the apps in QBOA view, right? So what we launched. Let me go back here, pressing all sorts of things. <laughs> uh, so what we launched is uh, QBOA client view and apps there, right? So. Uh, in the past couple of years, we've heard from many accountants through our accountant councils and through the customer interviews that we do of, hey, uh, we want apps in QBA OA client view, right? We already get that in QBOA, uh, but the issue is that when I'm in the client view, I want to also connect apps from there, right? Since it's very contextual and I simply can't do it then, right? So again, what we did is very straightforward. We did exactly that. We added the apps tab in the QBOA client view. So if you were to navigate uh, to your QBOA client view, you can see the apps there, right? So I'll go ahead and quickly show that experience. Um, this is a little bit of a screenshot preview of what that looks like, but I'll, I'll go ahead and go to QuickBooks and then show you from there. So this is a QBOA, right? QuickBooks Accountant. And here you can do, again, one thing. You can connect apps directly from this tab here. Um, but the feedback that we've got is that, hey, at me as an accountant, I am already on QuickBooks Online Client View. So if I click on uh, Puneet, who's one of my clients, right, I will enter Client View. So now that I'm on Client View, right, um, as an accountant, I want to know and connect apps straight from there. Previously, you could not do that, right? But now, if you follow my cursor and look all the way down here to the left navigation, you'll see apps, right? And so if I were to click on that, I can now fully connect all the apps there, right? This is huge for accountants, especially for the contextual piece that I mentioned earlier. If you're already on your client's view, you wanna be able to connect apps from directly there, right? A huge piece of feedback that we received over the past couple of years um, that I'm super excited to showcase here to everyone. So. Again, you can select any app and, and connect um, and go straight from there. And if you have already connected an app, you can launch it from here. And then similarly to um, other experiences, you can also go into your My Apps and see everything else that you have connected and launch from there as well. So with that being said, let me go back here to the Q&A section and see some questions. Excellent, oh, that looks, looks good. Um, yeah, a few questions coming through. So, um, in, in which which countries is the is this function available? Is it in United Kingdom or Canada as well? Yeah. Uh, so yes, this functionality is available in the UK and Canada. Um, it's yeah, it's it's fully available in UK and Canada as well as US here. Okay, excellent. Are there any more uh, plans around app connections for accountants? Yes, yes. Um, we're we're currently working on streamlining multiple app connections and multiple firm connections. Uh, we know as accountants, you may have multiple clients um, as well as multiple firms connected, right? So we're looking at ways on streamlining that just all through one view uh, rather than the view that you get today, which may be a little bit more complex. Okay, let's see. Um... So, so why should I connect via QBOA client view versus 
uh, you know, the regular connection and then QBOA left nav? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so there, there's two pieces to this, right? Uh, the first piece going into it is, again, that contextual piece. So when, you, when you're connecting via uh, QBOA client view, uh, you're already in your client's books. So this makes it much easier and quicker to gather that context, uh, particularly for that client, right? And then connect apps that you may think is necessary for them. And then the second piece is this is something that um, accountants find extremely frustrating that we that we didn't offer in the past, right? Again, if you have multiple clients, um, it's extremely frustrating to go, go back to QBOA, go into the apps tab and try to connect from there for every single client, right? So two piece there, uh, but that's that's mostly at a high level, um, like how we're kind of approaching it. Okay. And then what about the reverse? What if uh, I no longer need the app and uh, I want to try a different app? Can I disconnect the app from here as well? Yes, you, you can absolutely. Yeah. If you go into um, the, the the same view, right, you can you can hit the drop down button and then you can hit disconnect, right? So you just go on my apps view and then um, on the launch, on the drop down, it will say disconnect and you can do the same. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Well, I think that looks good. Thanks, Emmer. Appreciate the, the, the presentation. Thank you, everyone. All right. So next up, we've got the dynamic duo of, of Kartika and, and Suvanan to cover uh, chart view as well as spreadsheet sync. So guys, go ahead and take it away. Hi, everyone. I'm going to share my screen. Right. Um, so my name is Karthike. I'm a product manager at Intuit, and I work in the QPU Advanced team. Today, I'm going to talk about the chart view in QuickBooks Online Advanced. This is a new feature we built uh, sometime last year, late last year, um, to enable uh, our users build charts from their own QuickBooks data, all QuickBooks data. So I'm going to show you a demo of, of that feature. To begin, I'd like to uh, walk you through uh, and ask you for three survey questions. The first one being uh, on benchmarks. Do you benchmark key performance indicators of your client's company today? It's a simple yes and no question. Uh, I'd love for your uh, response to this one. Yeah, I, I think benchmarking is becoming more and more important as firms move to you know, the different tiers of client advisory services. Uh, so I'd be curious to hear this one as well. Yeah. What's your guess, 50-50? I would say 30-70, 30, 70, uh, 30, uh, 30 percent of our uh, survey participants would be benchmarking today. Wow, mm -hmm. OK. That's a nice guess. Uh, thank you for that. Um, a follow-up question to this question is the fact that would you be interested in benchmarking? So you may not be benchmarking today for a variety of reasons. Uh, you may not have the right tools um, or you may not try, have the right data, but given this feature, would you be interested in benchmarking the key performance indicators of your client's company? Yeah. Hopefully with the right tool, that's nice to be able to offer that type of service, service line. Yeah, especially with the right data. I think benchmarking data is hard to get by. Um, so I'd love to see the answer to this one. Wow. So then clearly this is something that most of you would like to see and share with your clients. And since we are interested in this feature, I would love to ask 
which of the following key performance indicators are most important for you or for your clients um, to share with them. The options are sales revenue, expenses, gross profit margin, net profit margin, net cash flow. And if there is any other specific KPI, um, then you could choose the other option or a custom KPI that you might be interested in. Please go ahead and choose the other option. What's your, based off of your research, what do you think this one might be? I'd say gross profit margin. Well, I'm, I, I wonder if I'm um, influencing the <laughs> yeah, answers. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> Maybe we shouldn't do that. So I'll wait for the results. Okay. So gross profit margin, net profit margin, and sales uh, turn out to be the most uh, important ones. This is uh, according to what my research also told me, but this is great. Thank you so much for your responses. Uh, we'll now jump onto the chart view feature itself. Uh, like I mentioned, we heard from customers that they wanted to create a lot of charts um, and with the data uh, that they were interested in. Today in QuickBooks, we have uh, the Performance Center, which shows you KPI charts for only 12 KPIs. Um, but we heard from accountants that um, there are many more data points, many more entities um, that they would like to create charts with. Um, so we went ahead and we built a data visualization tool in the custom reports builder. This is a tool that allows you to create simple charts um, with simple controls. Um, the type of charts that you can create are vertical bar, trend line, and stacked bar, um, but you have access to any data point uh, available in the custom reports builder today. So the, the range of data with which you can create charts has increased uh, exponentially um, and uh, you can now start creating charts with all that data so this is accessible to all advanced customers all qbo advanced customers it is live worldwide since uh, november last year and the place where you can find it in quickbooks is the custom reports builder let's go out now and see how it works so right now I am in QuickBooks and I will go down to the reports menu option. This is the reports menu page and I can access the custom reports builder from the create new report button at the top right. I click on the invoice uh, template. Let's say I want to see how my invoices have fared in the last month. So I click on invoice and I click on create. Yes. All right. Perfect. So uh, this is the custom reports builder and I can now start seeing my invoice list for the last month. As you can see on the top left, we're currently in the table view. The table view shows me this invoice list in a tabular format. But if I want to see this data in a chart format, I can simply switch to the chart view, which is the icon on the uh, right next to the table view. And I will start seeing a visualization of the data that I have on the table view. So the data I have on table view is my data set for the chart that I see now. On, this, on the left, you see uh, the chart display area. Uh, this is where uh, we will display the chart for you. And on the right, you see simple chart customization control options. The control options available today are the chart type which I mentioned are between vertical bar, trend line, and stacked bar. You can simply click on these options and see the visualization change on the chart area. And then you have the fields with which you can configure the chart with the data you want to see on the x-axis, the vertical y-axis, and the split by functionality with which you can create comparison charts. Uh, 
You also have the filter functionality on the top, uh, which you can apply uh, to this to, to the data. And uh, you can change the time period from the top left. Let's look at a few examples. Let's say I want to look at uh, my invoices for the last month. I'm currently in that view and I want to change the granularity of this data. So I click on the horizontal X axis and I can choose the granularity from the invoice date options. And I would select by week and I would start seeing this data in the weekly view. So I see that in the last month, I have raised $675 uh, dollars worth of invoices. And uh, the third week uh, of February was the most profitable for me. Let's say I want to see the distribution of these invoices uh, amongst my customers. So I go back to the horizontal x-axis and I choose the customer name from this view. And here I start seeing the display for uh, how my invoices are distributed across my customers. I see now that Reinhold Messner is the most profitable customer for me, having raised um, almost half the invoices in the last month. I want to quickly show you um, the latest feature that we've added here, uh, which is the comparison charts, which includes the stacked bar visualization option and the split by control. If I select the split by control, um, well, let me go back and uh, give another example. Let's say I want to see uh, the split by the, the comparison for my products and services. So I go back to the table view and I add that data point onto, the, onto my data set by searching for products and services. I now have this product and services data option in my table view. And I go back to the chart view and using the split by option, I will select the product and service. So I start seeing how my products and services are spread across my customers. I can probably go back and change this to the invoice date again by the weekly frequency. And then I see now that in the third week of February, uh, the natural fiber rope uh, product was the most, was the highest, the steel pittance, but I'm sorry, was the highest selling product in this third week. So this is an example of how um, we've uh, built this chart view feature. Uh, this is the first step we've taken in uh, creating a data visualization tool. All the data that you see today on uh, custom reports builder on um, this view uh, is available to you uh, to create these charts. Um, so I'd love for you to try this feature out um, and uh, send in your reviews and feedback uh, on this feature. Very nice. One, one final comment on this feature. Uh, I spoke about comparison charts. Um, this is a 25% rollout at the moment for all QBO, QBO Advanced customers. So some of you might um, see these two options for the stacked bar and the split by control, uh, but we are slowly rolling it out to all the customers. And we hope that in the near future, um, all, all of you will have these options uh, very soon. That's it. That was the demo. Um, I'm happy to take any questions on this feature. That's great. Sometimes for me, like the, the shiny gold coin, when I see the different colors up top, it's fun to see the different graphs. So you, you mentioned um, it's only in advanced at this time. Are there any yes. other plans to possibly put it in a different SKU? Uh, not at the moment. Uh, this is a part of the custom reports builder uh, feature itself, uh, which is an advanced specific specific feature. So uh, the answer to that question is no. Uh, this is going to be an advanced only feature uh, for the foreseeable future. Okay, thank you. Um, and then what about uh, user permissions? So can only accountants see it? Can only, um, you know, report only users see it in advance? What does that look like? Um, that's a great question. I don't have the answer to that at the moment, but I'd love to find out more details about this one and circle back with the right details. Okay. Yeah, in, in, in some of my test files, I think it's rolled out to one of mine. 
Um, and I can see it as an accountant. I can see it as the primary admin of the QBO Advanced. I just okay. haven't gotten to the point where if I'm a reports only user or limited permission levels, if I could uh, see that. Right. So QBO ad admins can definitely make use of this feature, but I do want to double check on how the other roles uh, can, if they can access this feature as well. Yeah. Okay. I know we're working on permissions ongoing throughout advance, which is great. Yes. Um, and then what about, how about exporting that? Can I, can I send that to a PDF or print or even over to Excel? Not at the moment, but we are building that capability. Uh, we are also building the capability to export these charts onto other QBO screens, for example, the Performance Center. And I will be back with more information as and when we roll that out. Okay. And then I think quick last question, um, Accountant View and Business View, is it available in both? Yes, that's right. It's available in both views. Perfect. Okay. I think that should be good. Thank you. Thank you. Right. And up next. Yep. Hey, folks. Uh, I am Subhanan. Um, I'm one of the product managers uh, for QBO Advanced, and I have been associated with Android for the past uh, two years. So uh, let me quickly share my screen. Right. Yeah. So today uh, we will be talking about uh, multi-company reporting. I know that how important it is uh, for our accountant community and accountants to have uh, this feature in QBO Advanced. And um, so before even going uh, de uh, detailed into it, I have some poll questions that I would like for you to answer. Uh, the next one being this one. So which is, how often do you create consolidated reports? And what's your guess on this one? Ah, this is uh, because we have uh, an accounting community here. So sometimes is what I'm thinking about, but let's see. Don't forget to get your answers in the quiz or the uh, poll questions, please. If I had a timer here, I would tell you, but just make sure you got it in. Yep. I guess so. Okay. Uh, the next question would be because, you know, consolidated reports are many. Um, some might be your favorites or some might be the ones that uh, your clients would be asking for. So which report do you consolidate from multiple companies? Uh, select the most used one. Oh, go ahead and go to the next slide. No. Oh. There you go. and know all the aboves, you can do number six. No pressure, but a few more seconds. Okay. Yeah. So profit and loss is the most uh, in the mind. Great. So uh, now moving forward, <clears throat> as you know that we what we have heard and 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 rightly so is that uh, creating consolidated reports and that to creating it manually 
it is really a tasking job, right? And and uh, if you have, you know, more and more companies that you'll have to consolidate, um, the, the effort increases exponentially uh, because that is the amount of time that you'll have to, you know, create a consolidated chart of accounts. So hence, what we are doing right now is that through Spreadsheet Sync, we are providing our accountants and our business owners a capability to quickly consolidate the financial reports in multiple currency with speed, flexibility, and accuracy. And uh, who can access this? Um, QBO advanced customers and accountants as well. It is available. So we have done a beta, public beta today, just so that uh, you know all of our participants can go ahead and use it um, when, when I explain it to them. And then it can be accessed to Spreadsheet Sync. Now, I have been talking about Spreadsheet Sync. So um, I know that some of you might be aware of this tool, some of you might not be. So it is important for us to understand what this tool is that we have uh, you know, recently launched. Um, I will you know, ask David uh, to share a screen and, and play a small video for us, a minute video for us, which will give a lot more clarity into this particular tool. When you're running a complex business, it's critical to use a financial management system that can be your single source of truth. But when you want to use a spreadsheet to build a report or edit data, migrating the data back and forth can be a headache and leave room for errors you can't afford. Spreadsheet Sync, only in QuickBooks Online Advanced, connects your business data directly to Excel so you can use your go-to spreadsheet functions with the confidence that your information is accurate easily build reports and visuals in Excel from your QuickBooks data to track your business performance. You can start with a template or add data from one or more companies to the spreadsheet. Then use formulas and functions, build pivot tables, and create graphs to get the insights you need. Save any report you create for future use and refresh with the latest data in a single step. The sync works both ways. That means you can use Excel to edit your existing data or enter new invoices, bills, customers, and more right into a spreadsheet. Just choose the data you want to sync and you'll see it in QuickBooks right away. Work with your data and track business performance the way you want with Spreadsheet Sync, only in QuickBooks Online Advanced. Great, so isn't that great? And, and uh, for all our accountants and everyone, uh, we know that how dearly uh, we love Spreadsheet and, and the flexibility that it provides. So we now have a tool which will bring in the data from QuickBooks to Spreadsheet and, and uh, vice versa. So I'll again share my screen because there might be questions that, you know, where is it that, um, you know, you will be able to see um, this tool. So I'll be playing, um, walking you through that. This is a screen that everyone knows, so which is the home screen of uh, QBO. Now, because we are talking about multi-company reporting, we will go to reports page. So in reports page, you will see a freshly uh, sub-tab that has been added, which is known as spreadsheet sync. Now on clicking on this, this provides information of this tool that we spoke about uh, you know, uh, a minute before. You can even go and click on how it works. This will open up um, a four minute or three and a half minute video, which will show you uh, about the functionality of it. Now, if you want to go to this tool, because this tool is in Excel, so it is not inside of uh, QBO, so to say. So we will have to go outside of QBO. And these are the steps that will be shown to you that you'll have to trust uh, this add-in and then you'll have to sign in. So once you click on, let's go, it's very simple. Uh, you will be shown a uh, pop-up and you just have to click on open Microsoft Excel. With this, automatically uh, Excel will open up. The uh, tool will be automatically downloaded as well. You do not have to do anything. All you need to do now is you'll have to sign in and you can sign in using your own credentials that you use uh, to you know, uh, log into QBO. Once you do sign in uh, to this tool, you can select the company that you want to proceed with. You can have multiple companies. I'm selecting just one company. And here, once we go here, this is the homepage of uh, Spreadsheet Sync that you'll look at. 
like we saw in the previous video, you can create reports, refresh them, create uh, you know, uh, dashboards and whatnot. You can even edit. And the third option that we have here is you can run multi-company reports. Now, in order to run multi-company reports, what you'll have to do is that you'll have to click on run multi-company report. For any multi-company report, first of all, you need to have a group of companies that you'll have to define, right? So if you do not have any, no worries. They will, the system will prompt you to add a new group. Once you click here, so you will get to a page where you can see all of the companies that you have added already to Spreadsheet Sync. Now, if you do not have a company that uh, is present here, all you need to do is go to company settings, click on add company, and yeah, and here all of the different companies that are associated with your account will be shown. As you might see here, is uh, I told that Spreadsheet Sync is available for QBO advanced customer, but then it is rare that uh, for someone who runs multi-company reports, all of the companies will be there in advance. So we haven't discriminated that way. So here, if you want to run multi-company reports, you can choose uh, you know, companies that belong to other SKUs, such as Plus, Essentials, Simple Start, and whatnot, and add it here to your group. Once you click on connect, the company will be connected to Spreadsheet Sync, and then you can go ahead and create uh, the group that you want. Here, you can give a name of the group because we are doing this webinar. I just thought it is apt to give the name of the group as webinar, and you can even choose the currency in which you want to see this multi-company report in. Because you will see in the first company that I have, the base currency of it, is Great Britain pounds, but I want to see the report in, uh, you know, uh, in, in USD. I save it, then I go ahead and I build multi-company reports. I select the report, like many of you said, the most important report that uh, you want to build in is profit and loss. So currently, we have profit and loss and balance sheet um, because this is something that we are just starting off with. We will be having um, you know, a profit and loss by class. We will be having trial balance and, and um, you know, more reports will be following up. Let's go ahead and see that how we can create uh, a balance sheet, uh, so to say. Here, we, have, we give you filters. Here we have date filters where you can select uh, the date through which you want to run this report for, right? And then we also do have some Excel customization because this will be very uh, useful whenever you are running multi-company reports. You might want to collapse and expand uh, the reports at different level just to see the information that you want. So once you go ahead, select these things, these are the certain customization options and just go ahead and run the report. Now, within seconds, the work that you used to do uh, for you know, maybe hours, uh, you will see that these three companies multi-company report is uh, loaded in and um, for each account what is the amount that is there uh, for each company is uh, provided and also we get a total of it now we do auto uh, consolidation of chart of accounts you will see that uh, there are certain um, you know accounts where all three values are filled in so that is where if the account name is similar in all of the three chart of accounts and they belong to the same hierarchy, we will do the automatic consolidation. So there are certain uh, you know, good rules that you need to follow, that you need to have a proper um, chart of accounts, similar chart of accounts in all the companies for it to work perfectly. Now, uh, apart from that, you will also see that we do have uh, currency conversion because there was one company which was there in GBP. We provide what is the currency conversion rate that was followed uh, here? And yeah, in short, this is the multi-company reports feature. Um, and uh, I would like for everyone to go into spreadsheet thing, whether it is for multi-company or for any other use case, please do uh, you know, look at that, work uh, with it and provide us your valuable feedback. Yeah, I will stop here. Any questions? Can, can I just say, hold the phone? So did you say that as long as I have one advanced file, I can do multi-companies with 
uh, or consolidated reporting with plus and essentials files as well. So we'll start. Yeah, That's so it. you'll have to log in through advanced company. And in that same account, all of the other companies that are associated, irrespective of uh, you know the SKUs, you will be able to add it and uh, run it. That's great. Okay, I know we're running short on time, but I got two quick questions. So um, I need Microsoft Office 365 for this to work. Can it work on uh, Excel for Mac and or Google Sheets? It'll work for Excel for Mac. Um, because I was just doing the demo on Excel for Mac. Oh, hello, and, yep. <laughs> uh, and and Google Sheet. Uh, no, we we are not supporting Google Sheet yet, but that is there in our roadmap. Uh, but yeah. Okay, and so it's free. It's part of Advanced. Um, I guess last question: uh, Is it available outside the U.S.? Okay, currently it is the beta version. We have made it available to U.S. only uh, today, and it will be available to Canada and U.K in the next three weeks. It's three weeks, perfect. Okay, so as long as you've got an advanced file, you can run run it. Yep. Perfect, great. All right, thank you so much. This has been great. All right, and for our last presenter, we are bringing on uh, Sahana. Hey, hello, Randy. Hello, everyone. Good morning. Let me quickly share my screen. All right. Uh, so yeah, before I begin a uh, little bit about myself, I am Sahana and I'm a product manager uh, for planning and budgeting team at Intuit and been with Intuit for close to three years and I'm talking to you all from Bangalore, India and it's raining cats and dogs here. Well, uh, I'm going to be talking about uh, planning and budgeting uh, feature today. So I have a quick poll for all of you. Have you or your clients ever interacted with QBO budgets? So QBO budgets is an existing feature for uh, QBO plus and advanced users only, and it is uh, available today in the product if you check it out. So do answer it accordingly if you have seen it. You have never heard of it, that's option one. And option two is you have used it once, but you have just, you have not used it, but, but you have heard of it. And third one is, yeah, I just tried once and I didn't, it didn't work out. And fourth one is you use it sometimes. And fifth one for power users of QBO budgets. And I'm waiting for your answers. There it goes. I was gonna say, did we see the poll question launch? Okay, poll questions come up. Get to it as soon as you can, if I may ask, thank you. Yes, I'm betting for more users to be like used it once. <laughs> What's your guess, Sahana? I think oh, uh, at least 20% 20, 20 of them uh, are using it sometimes or power users. Fingers crossed. <laughs> I already have one question I want to ask you at the end, so I'll, I'll wait. Yes. Okay. I use it sometimes. So 28%. That's a good number, but not use it, but heard of it. That's great. That gives me all the more reason to talk about today's topic that is budgeting in QuickBooks. So a team at Intuit is working towards making the budgeting, uh, the overall planning and budgeting feature more robust. And we have been hearing from our business owners, accountants, and all the QuickBooks users that they all do this budgeting in spreadsheet, either Excel, Google Sheet, and other uh, places. And they want an easier way uh, to bring these budgets into QuickBooks. And not just the budget, they want to be able to run reports easily and analyze these reports in spreadsheet. So that's what we heard. And there are also a set of uh, uh, QuickBooks admins who, who want to have more control over who can access the budgeting feature and who can view or create uh, budgets within QuickBooks. And the third one that you have been hearing is the current budgeting experience, as I see in the poll. Not many of you have heard of it, but not used it, is uh, not so great. We have been hearing about a lot of improvements that needs to be done. So what we have done is, uh, as, you, 
as you already know about spreadsheet sync and you don't have to talk more about it but we are integrating budgets with spreadsheet sync for qbo advanced users which means you will be able to create your budgets in excel just like you always do you can run the formulas and you can do whatever you want in excel and then you sync the created budget into quickbooks seamlessly not just budget you can now also run budget related reports and analyze these reports in spreadsheet so that's the one thing and the second thing is uh, quickbooks advanced users can create custom roles uh, to their team members and assign either full access or no access permissions to manage budgets and the third one is we have reimagined the complete budgeting experience and good news for plus users is we are extending the budget import functionality that was available in advance to plus uh, users too and all this goodness is available for both uh, plus and advanced users and it will be in product for selected few customers as part of our beta launch next week that is in the week of uh, march of 20th and it will be available to all us customers in the month of april and there are mainly two access points for to access budgets one is in the gear icon that is settings the other one is in left tab and i'm going to walk you through all these uh, enhancements soon uh, the first one now you have a lot more context on spreadsheet sync so how you can create budget in spreadsheet this is an advanced only feature and you can access it through any spreadsheet sync access point you can directly go to spreadsheet sync or you can uh, access budgets and you see an option over here which says uh, let me just highlight it so you see an option over here which says create in spreadsheet as you click on it it will take you to uh, excel you'll have to uh, you know complete all the step that shubhanan just mentioned and you see these four options and we talked about multico now it's manage budgets you click on manage budgets and you see two options it's not just budget creation it's also editing of existing budget whether or not they were created in excel or quickbooks online so all you, i'll click on create a new budget so you have to select which company you want to create budget for fill in the information like budget name period and budget type and now just click set up budget and on the left hand side as you can see there's a template that is populated and you can see all the chart of account applicable for your company all you have to do is you can run whatever formulas you want just add numbers in this template and quickly sync to quickbooks so the budget is created so now you can continue to edit this budget you can save this file and always come back and sync it continuously or you can also run reports from here and the created budget will be visible in this uh, you know qbo view and the next one not just now the budget creation is done right you want to run reports on monthly basis or weekly basis so you go to the same screen you have an option to create a report and you can see selected a company and select a report so there are basically two budget reports that are available today and which is a budget overview and budget versus actuals i'm going to click on budget versus actuals now you can customize this report uh, with uh, you can select whether you want it to be at uh, accrual basis or cash basis and which budget you want to compare with with the uh, actuals and you can also customize it with uh, displaying of columns now you click on run report the report is ready and you can continue to customize this or uh, yes in the customization you can you can uh, again you can alter uh, different settings you can change it to monthly and you can run charts and do analysis on the spreadsheet so that's about uh, budget reports and this is advanced only feature as spreadsheet sync is advanced both budget uh, based uh, budget creation and budget report is available for advanced users and the other one i want to repeat again is custom roles uh, is also available for advanced users and we not just this we are okay yeah just one thing as a report user it's uh, always you know it happens that you have taken a copy of data in excel but there are some invoices coming in there are payments happening in quickbooks online so you can quickly refresh uh, use the refresh button to get the real time data so the comparison is real you can have accurate comparisons and that's about what's for advanced users and 
in general, we are enhancing and reimagining the budgeting capability, right? So as I mentioned, there are two access points. This is for both plus and advanced users. So you start accessing uh, budget, uh, budgets through these access points. And then let's say I want to create a budget. You select the period for which you want to create budget, the kind of budget and format. You can see there is a subdivided budget option. User can create a subdivided bu uh, budget based on customer, uh, subdivided by customer, location, class, or department. And you, all you have to do is you select all these details, and this is the view you see. This experience is completely you know, uh, revamped now. There are a few things I want to highlight. You have an option to compare reference data, which means in the budget creation process, many of uh, you said that you want to be able to compare this with the actual data or different budget data. So you can simply select in the drop down whether you want to compare it with uh, previous year's actuals or you want to compare it with previous year budget. You simply select this and the data will appear as an actual column against each of the months and the total. And you also have an option to hide this uh, in case you don't uh, need it uh, after a certain point of time. And you can switch between different views over here and you can perform batch actions wherein you can copy whatever is in the reference data column that is actuals into the budget totals uh, instantly using this batch actions. You can change, now I'm creating a budget for customer one, you can change it to customer two and then create subdivided budget by customer. So I quickly save this budget and after budget creation is done, you can see there are a set of options available where you can run reports, you can archive this, or you can delete and duplicate. And as I said, plus users, plus Cubio plus users are also getting budget import functionality. So they can access budget import with this drop down next to create new and click on import budget. Now, all they have to do is they need to select which uh, financial uh, year they want to import this budget for and download this template that QuickBooks is providing and enter your numbers in Excel and simply upload that budget back. And you click on next, the budget is, you know, budget has opened in QuickBooks Online. So here uh, you can see this is a consolidated budget and you can still compare it with the previous budgets or actual data again. You can make some minor changes if you want to and then quickly save this budget. So that's about the budgeting functionality. Before I end, I really want to ask this question. How would you like our planning and budgeting team uh, to improve this uh, overall experience? What else uh, do you want us to work on in future? Okay. So we're, we're pushing up on time. So let me ask you kind of a Q&A while they're going through the poll questions. So I see you're wanting to add budget sheet uh, budgets right now, balance sheet budgets right now. I assume that's not currently available, only profit and loss accounts on this, right? Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, currently only uh, profit and loss. That's right. Perfect. And you did show how you can create a budget by class or location. That yes. I think is awesome. And importing into Plus now, I've heard oftentimes that's been a big request. So I'm excited about that. That's great. Okay, guys, pull questions up. Uh, a few more seconds left. Thank you for, oh, it's closed. There we go. All right, 40% on forecasting. Okay, we'll go ahead and wrap it on that. Thank you, Sahana. And let's get to the, the last slide. Yes, there you go. Okay, thank you. So um, a few resources left. There's the qbtraininggevents.com. Uh, take a look to see what's there information at the firm of the future articles and blogs and then we also have our feedback in action where we're hearing from accountants and and converting your input into action and you can see the updates of what's happening there link to the bottom again uh, at the bottom uh, no in the no webinar next month with the tax deadline good luck everybody uh, in april we'll see you in may and um, you're going to get through it it'll be great thank you very much for joining and putting up with me
over her TV feeds. Straight from the streets. <laughs>